Welcome to Inside the 18. I'm Michael Madgett, live from my dad's office in San Diego, California. I will be back Friday in Los Angeles. Cut the cord. Cut up. the cord, Mike. Cut the cord. I got to leave. <laughs> I got to leave at some point. That voice you're hearing right there is 99 World Cup winner, Saskia Weber. Back from his training journey is, you know him as Pro GK Academy, Omar Zini. What is up, dude? What's and up, joining us because we need somebody that actually knows something about goalkeeping. We have FC Cincinnati Ouch. goalkeeper. No, not on you. I was joking on Omar okay. right there. <laughs> FC Cincinnati. <laughs> SC Cincinnati goalkeeper Spencer Ritchie. Spencer, this has been a long time coming, man. We've been wanting to have you on the show for a while, so I'm glad we finally made it happen. Definitely, man. Definitely. I'm looking forward to it. So don't give me too much credit about uh, my goalkeeper knowledge yet, you know. It's okay. Omar disappeared after our last one with Franz Hook, so I think he was like, <laughs> I think he went and hid for a week. <laughs> no. Oh, dude, there was a uh, – there was a – so there was a, a, a T2 keeper. Oh, no, no, Toronto FC keeper, um, FC2 keeper that uh, was basically posting online. He's like, if you guys haven't heard this Franz Hoke episode, you've got to hear him go after Omar for like an hour. It is, it is some of the best podcasting you will ever hear in your life, dude. But uh, just, Omar, Omar stuck strong. Me. Omar did. stuck strong, though. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was definitely a, uh, it was a good conversation, but I think Franz is uh, very big time in his thinking. You know, we're not, can't, we can't all have... 11 Barcelona Academy players at uh, practices. So it's <laughs> to, train, to train your keepers whenever you want. To train our keepers, exactly. <laughs> Dude, Spence, the best one is he's like, it's very simple. It's like I had Pepe Reina, Victor Valdez. And so just had a few, a few of the players, you know, Academy players come, you know, and they shoot on him. And they're like, I'm like, I've got like a U9 kid who I think is just learning how to dribble. Like, I don't know how I can incorporate this. <laughs> that was a shameful Dutch session. accent, by the way. That was a very bad Dutch accent. Dutch Please accent, don't. Yes. Please don't ever tell him, ever tell him I tried to do that accent. Okay. It did not work out. I've been trying to work on my Franz Hoke, though. Maybe I can there do a better go. job. Um, but uh, speaking of, uh, of, of goalkeeping, uh, let's kind of get into this right now. By the way, Spence, is Chungus around? Is Chungus. Is that how you pronounce it? Chungus, yeah. He's, uh, yeah, Chungus is apparently, well, I now know this, but he's like the overweight Bugs Bunny. But uh, the neighbors uh, have a 10-year-old son. That named that uh, he was like the biggest puppy of the litter, and so they they kept calling him Big Chungus, and the name just kind of stuck. So he's uh, <laughs> he's napping downstairs right now, but maybe we'll bring him on at the end. <laughs> Dude, Big Chungus ma makes me think of like remember Big Pun, like the rapper Big Pun. No. Yeah. Yeah. Saskia uh, like, says, "I'm, I'm no, not going to get really it. I'm quick not shout visit. out though, um, really Ooh. quick before we get started to um, New Zealand and Australia hosting oh. the women's for World Cup. Sure. Oh yeah, be. that's. That's gonna be awesome. awesome. Absolutely. Super I mean, sick. just honestly, I mean, just you know, everything that's been going on there in regards to with the with the AW League, you know, in Australia. Um, I know a lot of players over here who play in the NWSL in the off season. They go over there and play over there, and, and how yeah. just how you know how strong both of those programs have been in regards to the, the women's game. I think it's gonna be a really fantastic tournament, and and actually a lot of great goalkeepers have come out of both countries. So uh, yeah. shout out to to all of them. Um, speaking of goalkeeping, uh, we had a, we had a question that came out because Spence, I don't know if you saw this, but, uh, so Franz Hoke, we post a video of Franz Hoke and there's, there's, you know, a few, few hundred, 400, 400 views or so on that one. I post a video of Omar. The thing goes viral. Literally. <laughs> it just goes viral. It, it is the Omar Zini pro GK Academy touch. You post anything about it. And it just goes viral. And in it, we asked people, how do they improve their goalkeeper IQ? Because Omar was telling a story about how he learned how to develop his goalkeeper IQ uh, by watching Arsenal in, uh, in the mid-2000s, right? Yeah, definitely. That was definitely my uh, introduction into uh, not just watching games to watch them, but actually trying to learn something. And I think the earlier you start with that, the earlier you can you know, ask those questions and then once you ask those questions, you could get answers. I mean, I was getting them at like 12 or 13 years old. So I was able to, you know, ask follow-up questions to those questions. And it definitely uh, opened my mind to seeing the game a little bit differently. Yeah. And I want to give a shout out to some of these answers that we got back from some, you know, young goalkeepers. Because this is really awesome. I love the fact that when young goalkeepers start interacting with us on social media 
and showing us how they're paying attention, you know, not just to ourselves, but also to their coaches at home and just also doing the independent learning during the quarantine, which has been fantastic. So we can give a sh shout out to uh, at Muscle Mason 5, uh, which is just, I love it. that is a phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal. And he says, I improve my IQ by trying to play other positions other than goalkeeper and being aware of what they are doing. So as a goalkeeper, I can communicate what I need to communicate. Um, I think that's fantastic. Uh, Spence, did you, uh, did you ever play other, other, other positions? I did. I played, I actually was relatively late to making the full-time shift to goalkeeper. I was a kind of like a center midfielder slash goalkeeper. Um, and then probably when I was 12 or so, 12 or 13, uh, I made the full-time switch, but um, I, I think that's completely true. It's not a coincidence that many, many, head coaches, certainly more than the ratio uh, you would think would play out. Um, so many goalkeepers end up being head coaches um, or center backs, you know, guys in uh, sort of the back of the field because they have to learn so much of what's in front of them. Um, and I think that translates uh, into a lot of good uh, coaching uh, sort of attributes. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think, it, you know, one of the wonderful things is that I love what Mason said here in regards to that way I get to see what the other goalkeeper is looking at for me and it helps me communicate when I'm in goal, what I need from my players. Cause I've actually been in that position, you know, and Saskia, you've spoken about this a lot of times. If you've never played midfield, how, what, what, how, what, how can you expect what you want from your midfielder? Because you've never been in that position. Yeah. I mean, I think it's good. You know, I played on the field through high school, but not, not with club or with the national team, obviously. Um, although I did have my field player uniform. <laughs> Wait, um, you had a field for the national team? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Just wow. in case. <laughs> yeah. I had a, yeah. <laughs> I never used it, but I have it. Um, <laughs> um, but I think, I, obviously, I think it's good. You, you know, to understand what, what the field players are looking at um, um, offensively, uh, even if you play attack, to see, like, the weaknesses in goalkeepers, the angles from a different perspective so you can, you can shut that down once you're in goal, you know, and vice versa. Like, I love when field players, like, throw them in there. Let them see. Let them understand. See, it's also really funny. But, like, let them see. Throw them in there and let them understand angles and positioning. And so it'll, it'll just make them better on attack. Omar, I know, I know you, you're Mr. Forward. You're Mr. The Number Nine up there. And uh, you, like to sh you like to showcase your finishing skills. That's why you have all those uh, viral videos on Pro GK Academy. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but you feel that also that helped you learn by playing up top. It helped you learn how to make those saves because you, you knew where they were looking to score. Uh, I would say it's, it, it more so helped me understand like where the ball would fall. So like specific trends. Uh, so I, as a forward, I would kind of understand, you know, where to make my runs and where the spaces would open up. So I think as a goalkeeper, I started realizing, okay, you know, when this forward drops his head or when the center back drops their head and, uh, it's probably going to serve a ball over the top, maybe as a goalkeeper, because I've been a forward, I would probably cheat up five, 10 yards because that run is going to be made over the, into that space that I normally would run in as a forward as well. Yeah. So I kind of had that kind of reverse engineer of like, if that's what they're doing, why don't I kind of try and influence that by starting my position a little bit higher? Maybe that center back sees me stepping a little bit higher and they don't play that ball. So how yeah. can we as a goalkeeper disrupt, um, I guess, the thought process of uh, center backs? Yeah. No, I, I think that's a really, really good point right there. Spence, do you, uh, do you guys ever throw the field players in the goal? Does, uh, does that ever happen at FC Cincinnati? I meant when they're younger. I know, I know. But I, just, <laughs> I, would, just I would just love to hear if that ever I, happens I at the first our, team session. Our honorary, uh, our honorary fourth string has got to be Kendall Lawson. He's uh, usually pick up, uh, he usually picks up the gloves without, uh, without being asked to, and we'll hop in there <laughs> sometimes after training. So it's, uh, it, it usually ends up being the guy that's not afraid uh, of getting hit with the ball. So, and Kendall's probably up there with the best of them for that. So, yep. Does, we always go he... back to Mia Hamm getting that, getting those goalkeeper minutes in the 95 World Cup. That's insane. That that's yeah, absolutely. I, I wasn't happy. <laughs> well, we were out of subs, and it was before you had the goalkeeper sub and stuff. So it was like oh I was God. like, yeah, I'm going in, and no. Now, did you start warming? Did you start warming up and everything? No, I knew we didn't or? have. I knew we didn't have. Oh, oh man. I played um, the next game, but it was. But still, you're like, yeah. Oh, she made a couple saves. 
If only they could have put you on the field, Sauce. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, speaking of, uh, speaking of this transition from talking about playing on the field, we're going to be heading into today, today's topic. Do you see the segue here? Because today's topic is foot saves and sweeping. And the reason we have Spencer on is because he's really good at doing this. Uh, <laughs> I mean, dude, you've got, you've got some really – dude, last year in MLS, you had some really, really solid foot saves. And so I was like, this is like such a perfect topic to have you on here. Um, so – Kind of in your words, first off, for the audience out there, like maybe some parents who might not be familiar with what we're talking about. In your words, what is a foot save? Um, I would say a, a foot save is, is sort of a technique that you can lean on um, when you have a situation where a striker is in close on you, especially on an angle. Um, I think you can really um, – you know, really lean on your feet to make low saves. I think the further out um, a striker is or more central, um, oftentimes you should probably try and rely uh, on your hands to make those saves. But um, to me, making a foot save, it's not a, a guessing thing. It's a, it's definitely, a, you know, a, a reaction save where you want to make sure you have good balance. Um, and it sort of opens up your repertoire uh, and your range to make saves. If your hands don't have to rely um, – or you don't have to rely on your hands, you know, to get all the way down to the ground as well as covering up to the crossbar. Um, and you can rely on your feet to do the bottom half of that. Then I think it puts you in a position to, um, you know, be well suited to make a lot more of those saves than you would have if you were only sort of relying on um, one half or the other. See, and you said you didn't know anything about goalkeeping, dude. Come on. Look at that. That answer right there. If you were going out a coaching course, that was, that was succinct right there to the point. All you need is an English accent, and you've got the A. That's all you got to do. I, I was, most of my coaches were English growing up, but I felt like I learned that from watching a lot of German goalkeepers um, growing up. I, even today, like, I, I enjoy watching different guys, uh, different styles of play, um, but – you know, at the end of the day, it's what suits you best. I've played, uh, I played with Marco Carducci, who's a younger Canadian goalkeeper when I was in Vancouver. And he was so damn fast at sweeping his feet and like dropping on things that he could, he hardly never needed to use his feet because he was so quick at sweeping his feet out from under him and getting down on balls. But I think as you go up in levels um, and guys start to strike the ball harder and harder, you, you kind of have to, you know, try and just get whatever body part or limb it is um, that's closest to where that shot ends up um, getting it down there because throughout the course of a season or, or, or many games, you'll probably be exposed for it. No, I, dude, I, I love the fact that you brought up about, you know, how the clo you know, closest body part because when Omar and I, we were um, in Arizona a couple of years ago for MLS preseason and uh, Memo, the goalkeeper coach for, for Portland, he was doing an activity um, with, 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 uh, with some of the guys there. I think it was actually Steve Clark and, and Jeff Antonella. And um, he was working on the foot save. And he brought up the simple fact. He's like, the ball, based on the pace of the ball, that is the closest, closest appendage to that area. So if you tried to go with your hand, there's physically no way you're going to time it in time that you're going to be able to play it into a good space. So, and Omar, I know that's something that you've actually started working on more and more and more with your goalkeepers is, is recognizing, you know, just getting that right body part to the ball. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, one of the pro series things that I did with Chris Sharp, one of the points that he made I thought was really, it's kind of like put everything into perspective was don't take away the feet to use the hands. And like you said, the, the closest body part to, uh, to the ball, make the save with. And I started to notice that, you know, even at Cal State LA with my goalkeeper, he had been playing dodgeball, excuse me, handball uh, his whole life. So obviously it's like different dimensions on the field uh, that you're getting a lot more attacks and th things like that. So he used to always default into this like spread save and then try to essentially just make his legs as, as wide as he can, almost like a, a V shape, like an A. And I told him like, you know, like uh, Spencer said, stop making a reaction save, or excuse me, stop, uh, stop trying to default and be proactive about it, but be reactive. And I think that's what it is. A lot of times when I see people, they try to make their feet make the save before they even see where the shot's going. And it's probably just, just outside their body part and they probably end up getting down with the hands instead. So I think that's the big thing is that I, I teach it, but I don't tell them to, like I'm not saying you have to make a foot save when the ball's five yards away. I say, look, just keep the legs active. Make sure your prep set isn't too wide so you're not stuck into the ground so you can pick, it the, pick the feet back up. 
But even at that point, you got to keep a variety of saves open. I, I was just thinking about Team Handball, man, because that, that game always I, – I've seen it, like, on TV, and I'm like, dude, that game looks awesome. Why don't we play that game here? Sus, did you ever play that game, like, maybe when you went to Holland or anything? We, we have an Olympic Team Handball team, Michael. Wait, what, you were? What? There, there's an Olympic Team Handball team, and a lot of they soccer They won the players, World Cup. And a lot of soccer they really? players play it, yeah. In Holland, yeah, Holland's team did. But, but oh I mean, the U.S. Wow. has one and stuff. Um, I agree with everything. I think that with younger kids and stuff, I think the, the problem you're finding is the reason they're making foot saves is because their weight is on their heels, and that's what they're throwing. That's all they have. Um, but, you know, the I 100% agree. The closer in and the pace of the shot, the fastest appendage there is your foot. It's your foot. But it's still a calculated state. You're you're still focused on it and thinking about it. Your weight's in a certain position. You know, it's not that like falling back last last kind of thing. It's 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 a thought process and it's it's a it's it's a technique. Um, and I think kids have to learn that. They have to understand that because a lot of times they do it um, when, like Omar said, they can get their hands to fall. And I was I was sim similarly taught that my hands went down first. I was very quick to the ground. And that but I was like yeah if you, you keep the ball of the net if you make the save with your foot you make the save with your foot and sometimes that's your fastest reaction I mean, look, one of the things I wanted to bring up with you is obviously, you know, you you came up in a, in in an earlier time where a lot of times it was <laughs> well, you know, okay. I, like <laughs> you, you came up in an earlier time where you won World Cups. How about that? Um, okay. And they still win World Cups. Okay, geez, man, I'm really putting my All foot right, in my mouth. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but um but no you were but a lot of t but goalkeeper coaches when you were coming up it was frowned upon for you, you to use your feet it was actually and why why was that so is it because of what you were talking about in the regards to the default of the feet as opposed to actually understanding it wasn't when taught. it wasn't taught like it, it was not part and it wasn't taught no it was hands down positioning weight forward um and work on getting yourself down to the ground reaction get a hand there you know get what you can but now as you know the games evolved as the speed of the games evolved on the women's side as well um the pace of shots overall i mean i'm not saying all of a sudden everybody's kick i'm saying the majority are kicking harder faster and stuff where you know it wasn't the majority so per se back then, um, you have to, you have to kind of, you have to change to that. And I think it is a legitimate part of your, your toolbox. Um, but I want kids to know that it's not something like, I find that more kids do it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Is that a better way to put it? They're doing it no. because their, their body weight's off, their positioning's off and they're being lazy. Like, you know, train properly and train it and use it in the right technique and then then we're on point. So Spence, do you think that this is something that you should wait until a goalkeeper's matured a little bit and, and they have a little bit more of an understanding of how their body moves before you start actually putting it into their toolbox? Not necessarily. I mean, for me, like you should try and and grow as a goalkeeper. You should try and train a goalkeeper so that he has a taste of he or she has a taste of everything so that they can potentially you know be on distance to be compatible like in any playing style any defensive system um you know i think the more that you can expose a young goalkeeper to uh and sure there'll be struggles and difficulties that come with that you know some things guys pick up quite easily some things uh it takes people longer to do but i think the more tools and techniques that you have uh in your locker you know and you kind of work on each one of them and, and sure you might get to a point where you end up becoming really good at foot saves and so for that strike on an angle you might step out two yards higher and rely on your reactions up close then maybe if you're someone that you realize you're really quick dropping down that same angle you might take a, a step further in to the goal line to give yourself a little bit more time to react, give yourself time to get down. So I think the more stuff that you experiment with, um, and I mean, honestly, younger, the better. I know there's Absolutely. some mental immaturity for sure that, um, you know, that, that younger goalkeepers might struggle with, um, you know, some lack of success if things don't happen straight away for them. But I think the more that you can expose yourself to, um, the better and, and probably earlier, the better. No, I totally agree. And I think we've talked about this a lot on the show is it's understanding why, 
Like, and the For younger sure. the better. Understanding why you're doing it. Don't just do it because you saw it on TV. Like, understand why, when to use it, how to use it, and how to use it properly. And, um, sure. and the younger you start teaching that, just the better they'll be at all different situations and scenarios. I'm glad you just brought that up right now because Omar just posted a video. This is a nice little plug for Omar right here uh, with, a nine year, with a nine-year-old today. And in that, on the follow-up, he, he went with the feet. He went with the feet on the block. And, 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 you praised, and you praised him for it because of the way that you were coming in at him and based on how his body shape was when he went down. Um, can you break that down a little bit, Omar, for us? Yeah, no, I did some uh, just angle work. And uh, I shot it from his right side. So most likely when I cut back, I'm looking for the far post shot. Uh, he started leaning, so I shot into the near post. He got down with the near post, stood on the ground for a little too long. So I was like, okay, I got you know, to teach him good habits. So I sprinted after the rebound, and he stepped right in front of the near post, and I shot it low to uh, the near post, stuck his right foot out, and made the save. Nice. And I think the biggest thing now is, I, as a coach, what I've started to learn is that, you know, Mike, I've been the kind of guy who tries to spoon feed everything because, you know, you want to have the kid leave the session feeling comfortable, confident, and, you know, they, they want to tell their parents, hey, I had a great session with Omar. Let's do it again. So now I've kind of changed the approach of like how Anthony White was saying, like the kids may find a way or find a solution without you even teaching them. And it might mm -hmm. be the most efficient way for them. So I've started changing my, my approach as a coach now to, uh, yeah, I'll introduce foot saves, but let me just see if on a 1v1 or how they step up to the angle, if they use their feet. And if they use their feet now, it's like, okay, like, hey, why did you use your feet here? Uh, well, because obviously that was, you know, the closest part to to the ball. Okay, great. So now, you know, saying so like now they understand why they're doing it versus like me telling them you should use your feet here. You should use your feet there. So I'm saying like, it's like they're problem solving on their own. And then from there we fine tune uh, those little, those little decisions that they're making off instinct. Dude, I, I love what you just said there, because I think that's one of the biggest issues that, that a lot of goalkeeper coaches have in regards. And then they try to conceptualize everything for the goalkeeper before they've even experienced it before. And then they can't develop any sort of self-confidence or autonomy of understanding their body and what works best for them. For instance, Spence, what works for you might not work for me, you know? For and sure. as a goalkeeper coach, I need to understand that, that he's confident doing it this way. So let him keep yeah. doing it that way. And, and is, that, is that an issue you've ever had, um, you know, coming up as a goalkeeper where you, you've had certain things that work for you and other and goalkeeper coaches have been like, you know what, why don't, why don't you try it this way? And you're just more comfortable doing it the other way? Um, yeah, one would probably be uh... – my freshman year going into UW, um, sort of the, the staff that was in place or the goalkeeper coach, I should say, uh, that I had a good relationship with, he ended up um, stepping away from the program for the freshman year. So they brought in um, someone new. And, and one thing that he tried to drill into me that I just like could not um, do was sort of the footwork technique for crosses. Um, I'm personally a big fan, um, especially of balls that are more like lateral or even back post balls of taking off with two feet. Um, it's just something for me with my timing that I like. I've, I'm able to get the height that I want with the two feet. And I think that with jumping with two, it gives me a little bit more stability and being able to take contact. Um, he was like J run or die. Like this guy would not leave alone the like, you know, work your feet, work your feet, and then come back and attack the ball. And I think in theory, like, especially front post balls, like almost always you should be going one leg driving through. But I think with the pace and the quality that people whip balls in, you don't have time to do the J run, you know, maybe at a younger age, or if you, you just want to work on your back post, um, you know, your feet, your crossover, your ability to change direction, um, you know, working on fundamentals. I think it's, there's something there, but um I'm more of a, you know, be patient and then take a direct line to the ball um, sort of guy when it comes to crosses. And that was something that he really wanted to teach. And I eventually had to go in uh, and be, just be like, this is not working for me. So um, I guess that's one example that comes to mind. I think that's a great, ex I think that's a great example. And again, and, and crosses is a great thing. Like I've sat there in camps, whether it's like ID camps or whatever, and I've stepped back and said, let me see, let me see each individual goalkeeper. Let me, let me see their technique. And if it's efficient for them and if they're getting to the ball on their way, I'm not going to sit here and be like, you have to put the right knee up because you're on this side and the left knee up because you're on this side. And that's the only way you're supposed to do it. And you have to, you know, no, you know, you have to see what works for the goalkeeper. And if it, if it's working for them, if their timing is right for them, 
they're getting to the highest point, they're getting to the ball when they should, in the, in the space that they should, then it's working for them. And to, yeah. to tell them they're doing it wrong um, is, I don't agree with that. Like, uh, you yeah. know how I feel about that. It's a gray area. It's a gray area, period. Yeah. Yeah. Omar, I no, think Mike, you said think, something. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I just, uh, I want to add on. I think building off the trend that we've all talked about in terms of like the influence of, uh, you know, accessibility to, to actual professional games nowadays. And I think a lot of these, you know, trends have been around for a long time. A lot of German goalkeepers have been doing the spread save, the block save for years and years and years. But now because it's kind of, you know, we're being exposed to it here in the States every weekend. We're seeing guys like Manuel Neuer, Der Stegen, all these guys who are, you know, Spencer making Richie, these, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. I'm just saying like where it originated from. It's like, you know, the, the Germans well, do know. all that. And then, um, and then obviously now with, you know, De Gea for the last, you know, eight, eight or so years, he's the kind of the king of the foot save. So what I used to think was, you know, coaches thinking that it was lazy because like, hey, if you can't get there with your, you know, don't go with your feet, go with your hands because that's the way to do it, the sweep technique. And then when De Gea started doing it, everyone's like, oh, wow. Okay, laziness versus efficiency. Okay, efficiency probably is probably the way to go with this foot save. But again, like you said, Mike, he's six foot four. So his range of when he uses his foot saves is completely different from somebody like myself who's six feet. And then as coaches, sometimes people take that out of context and even more so players and parents will take that out of context as well. And now when they step into a game, it's like, well, De Gea is doing it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to use my hands anymore. Why would I do that if the best in the world is doing this? That's I think my the best point. Thing, yeah. And I, so, so the best thing to do obviously is as, as a coach, you know, I, I've tried to do this more now. Like I usually do so many reps and now I'm like, okay, I'd rather do half the reps and then have a discussion about, Hey, in, you know, rep two out of those four, why did you decide to go with, you know, uh, the sweep instead of the foot? Well, you know, in that moment, I felt like I was still moving. So I needed to, you know, sweep my leg, you know, something like that. So now they're thinking about it. And then by them having that thought process, now you have a, as a coach, have an idea of like, oh, okay, they actually did it for the right reasons versus like, oh, I saw De Gea doing it. I wanted to try it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's funny that you're, you're, everyone's just now bringing up in, in regards to the sweep because uh, I now want to kind of turn it over and, and in the contrast of the sweep because I think this is another thing is that it's not like the sweep goes away. You know, it's a matter of understanding when to use something and when not to use something. So, Spencer, for again, for, you know, parents out there who might not be familiar with what we've been talking about right here, and, and a lot of parents do, do tune in, and I want to make sure that they understand the language. Um, what is the sweep so that they kind of are familiar with it? As in, like, sweeping your feet out from under you to, to get yes. down? Um, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, in, in order for your upper body to get straight down, you know, beneath your waist, you got to get your feet out of the way, you know? And and it, it is a, a skill um, and a technique completely. You know, as I've said, I've, I've played with goalkeepers before that they – they have that timing where I, I like to call it actually speaking of Bobby, Bobby and I have been trying to come up with a name for it. I call it like an air set where you're like just off the field as the ball is struck so that you actually end up using your weak side leg to, to create leverage for yourself. So in a scenario where if you're trying to sweep your feet out from under you in a ball that's struck just outside of your right foot, say, if you have the timing of that air set, where your feet are like just above the ground when the strike is hit, then your left foot can actually create the leverage for your body to get down. So you can put your left leg down to allow your right leg to sweep out quicker so that you can drop down to your right side. But yes, yeah, I mean, a, a sweep is just a, you know, a way of basically getting your feet out of your own way. By the way, the, the best thing is while you were saying that, I was trying to, I was literally, I was like, I'm visualizing this. No, I need to do it. So in the chair right here, I was literally you were trying moving to your do, feet. I was moving yeah. my feet and I was trying to, to simulate it, to understand this, uh, the air set into, into the thing. Um, you know, look, this is obviously not easy. The timing um, is, no. is, is difficult. Um, but again, in order to develop those habits, kids need to be exposed to it. So you can't just be like, okay, foot safe, foot safe, foot safe, foot safe. Mm -hmm. And then they get to your level, Spencer, and, and all they can do is that. Um, For sure. Because again, if you can get your body down and you can get your hands to it, it a lot of times it is, it is the better, better option. So, I mean, do you think that like, so basically we're talking about anything in, effective inside, under the shoulder, inside the bubble, right? With certain with certain pace, or is it just a little bit outside of your shoulder that you're referring to? 
I mean, it's hard because the pace and the angle and the distance, like to me, make up everything. You know, I have in my mind, I feel like you see so many strikes from so many different angles, different depths. Um, I feel like from where, if it's somebody on a really close angle and they're six yards away, in my mind, I'm 100% already decided that if he hits that right down the middle, I'm going with my feet, you know? If he's on top of the 18 and in the middle of the box, I'm 100% decided that my feet are not going to touch this ball. You know, if it's straight down the middle, then I'm going to probably turn my hands and try and kill it in front of me. Um, for each goalkeeper, it'll be different of where in between those two sort of opportunities, what your comfort level is and what your confidence level is um, and what part of your body make that save. Um, you know, if it's something that's maybe sort of on the angle in between those and, you know, maybe eight yards, um, then I think it, it comes down to what your strength is. Is it some, You know, would you step out to it, um, you know, and commit your feet to maybe a, a lower save and keep your hands available for something that's a little bit more off the ground? Um, or do you drop in and, and rely totally on your hands? So I think, you know, to some of our points before, I think that's based on the goalkeeper's comfort level um, with each technique. And I think it's their, you know, sort of ability to read maybe what the striker um, is going to try and do with the ball at his feet. Yeah. No, I, I, I think uh, one thing also too, and I don't know how, you know, Saskar or Omar feels about this, but I think it's also, it's your set shape too. How your set, how your shape mm -hmm. is when you set is going to determine how you go in, how you go in for that ball. Mm -hmm. If you're already leaning low, then you're going to be, it's going to be much easier for you to sweep out. If you're upright high, you know, you're going to be, and also to be honest with you, a lot of youth keepers and Omar, I know you've seen this when, when you've been training, you know, on, on the videos and stuff, because I've seen some of the keepers that you've been training. It's just difficult for them because they're going through that kind of that awkward stage. And Saskas has talked about this as well too, where they just, they just don't have that, that dynamic hip, you know, hinge drop. So it's very difficult for them to get down. So they, it's, it's easier for them to just do a shift of the body, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think it's, it's like a, you know, like, I think as you get older, you start realizing what your body's capable of. And I think uh, I've even had those moments uh, in my youth career where I would make a save with my feet and I'd be like, oh my God, you know, you know, like I think Spencer, you had one against Atlanta United where they hit a through ball. It was like a 1v1 and you kind of fell to the ground just a little bit, but you had your trailing leg. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm sure it was the IQ or I don't know what the, the reps, the experience, but you had an do idea. Want, that, do we okay. want to watch it right now? I have it up. I've queued it up. I've queued it up if we want. Yeah. Queue it up. Queue it up. I I, I'll be... give you guys the thought process to it too. Yes, please okay. go for it. All right, cool. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me, let me share the screen here. Hold on. That's Teal Bunbury right there. So keep talking guys while I'm not sharing the screen here. <laughs> no, I guess yeah, no, for, as a, as a sort of a, a common theme of, of through balls, cutbacks, um, I'm a big believer that strikers want to go back where it came from. It takes a striker of, of like real quality or it's just the, the sort of the ball is leading him to that. But I think the strikers want to finish back to where the ball is coming is from. That one, so it, is it that it, one right there? Yes, yeah. that's the one. Okay, okay. So here, let's go back here. See the build up here, yada, yada. All right. All right, take us through this here, Spence. But so in this one, because it's a more central angle to me, it kind of like opened up the whole goal. But I thought that even the way that his body shaped up, that he wanted to go to my right. And so, but then I sort of halfway through, I'm not, you can, I've committed to the right, but I've sort of like pulled my hands back because I know he's not going to go that way. And then at that point, I'm just trying to get as long as I can. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is probably one of those more like, it's a little bit of an unorthodox save. Um, you know, in maybe a more textbook, I can stay up, stay more balanced and not try uh, and anticipate where he's going. But, um, you know, I did well to recover here that I sort of started leaning to the right because I thought that's what he wanted to do. Um, but once I realized he was going to get an early toe on it instead of letting it run across him, um, you know, just to try and get long and, um, you know, cover sort of the floor. I think with a lot of one, one benefit of sort of like the spread and speaking of Ter Stegen, he's like, I don't know how he's so flexible. He can like go out and do like that A, V pattern where his legs are basically like out to the side. But oftentimes with chances in close, I think as if you can cover as much of the ground 
um, is possible and force strikers to finish, you know, mid goal or the upper third of the goal. Um, I think throughout your career, you'll make a lot of saves or you'll, you'll force strikers to have really um, composed cheeky finishes um, over the top. Obviously you shouldn't overdo it, but uh, more often than not, if you don't get beat through you, um, you're going to make a lot of saves in 1v1 scenarios. Did you, I, think, I think what a lot of the younger keepers watching have to realize is that's, that is that's understanding your body and controlling your body. So even mm -hmm. though you committed to the right, like being able to still have the, the control of your body to sweep the leg to make that save, that's a legit save. That's not an accident, keepers mm -hmm. that are watching. That's sure. like... That, that's the same as putting your hands up. Okay, I've committed to the right, but now I still see the ball and I still have my legs and I'm going to use them. Um, sure. And it's a conscious state. So kids have For to sure. realize that. Yeah. Um, I, want, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about the confidence factor, you know, because I think one of the things that happens, and I've, I've been guilty of it as a, as, a, as a goalkeeper coach as well too, of – not allowing kids to fail, not allowing kids to fail and, you know, and saying, oh, well, you know what, it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. Um, and recognizing as I've got become an older goalkeeper coach that they need to get scored on this way. They need to, they need to start recognizing for themselves what works, what doesn't work, you know? For and, sure. um, you know, so, uh, Saskia, I know you're really big on this. You're really big Absolutely. on like they have to get scored on. They have to get scored on. They have Otherwise, to learn. They, learn? they have to learn. Like like Omar knows, I'm a proponent of that. But I, I don't want to come up to you and tell you. I want you to come up to me and tell me, like you know why? Why did this happen? Explain this to me, and be able to understand your balance was off. You, you know your positioning was off. Be able to answer the questions for yourself and self coach yourself. So and the only way you're going to do that is by failing and trying what you think's right and it's not and so like i said like i've stepped back and watched keepers take crosses just watch them and then and they keep failing or they keep overrunning something and then the point comes i said why does this keep happening to you do you know why do you know why this keeps going over you why you're not getting to this ball if you can't answer the question then we're going to talk about it and explain it to you if you can then you should know and you can fix it we i can fix it but i want you to know what you're doing wrong and so, um, so that comes with everything, you know, it comes with using your feet. It comes with the crosses. It comes with everything. Yeah, no, absolutely. And now Omar, you started, you've started doing this as an, and you did it last week. Was it last week or a couple of weeks ago where you started showcasing on your, on your channel, goalkeepers actually getting scored on and making mistakes and then showcasing how, you know, you've been giving the coaching points and then, how they, they pick it up, they pick up those cues and then they do it, do it again. I think, I mean, personally, and, and Spencer, I, I don't know how you feel about this, but I think it's really important for goalkeeper coaches out there to start doing this so that people aren't just seeing all these videos of goalkeepers just doing everything perfect and perfect and it's perfect because it starts creating this, this mindset of like for young goalkeepers, we're like, well, yeah, because yeah. yeah. I've been watching these yeah. videos and the goalkeepers always do it right, quote unquote. Yeah, show them how they do, show them what's wrong, show them what's right, you know, period. Um, but, and so they can understand why. Like, we keep saying that. They have to understand why they're doing something, why they're, why they're buying in to what you're coaching, or why they're buying into um, a certain technique. Show them. Yeah, no, and, um, and I, I want to talk about that here because uh, the, the sweep – we we're talking about the sweep again. And Omar, I don't know if you have a video that you've been doing lately uh, with the sweep <laughs> technique that you want to show. Uh, but Omar, you missed it up. the past week. He's been Mr. I, video. I, I've been Mr. Video <laughs> while, while, while you've been gone. Um, but I want to talk about where your feet are pointed as well, too, um, creates where you steer that ball. And, and Spencer, I, I know you know this because a lot of times if your toes are pointed out inside, well, it's the same thing as your power shoulder dropping into the post. You know, you're going to veer, you're going to steer that ball back into space or in, into a bad space. So can you kind of explain to kind of like kids out there, like how important it is when you go with the foot save that you extend that foot away from post and not just let the ball hit your foot? Yeah, I mean, that's one huge benefit of foot saves is that if you get it right, 99% of the time the ball's going to clear the danger, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so I think part of that, you know, the difference between maybe going into a spread or a block is with the foot save, you're 
really trying to bring sort of your leg or your foot to the ball to create that momentum with the save. So it's not only that you're making the save, but you're also basically ending the, you know, that scoring opportunity or that situation. Um, but no, we talk about it uh, at training a lot. And people always have, you know, some, speaking of Bobby, I'll give Bobby another shout out. But um, we work a lot, especially midweek, um, on sort of reaction stuff, um, things in close, foot saves. Basically, having to make that split second decision of whether to you go with your hand or your foot, where it's in that sort of eight yard, with hit with pace um, sort of range. And a lot of it is just sort of having that patience to be able to just turn your toe out and just almost make it like a backboard for that strike. You know, you don't have to manipulate, um, you know, the strike too much if you're making a foot save with your feet, as long as you can open out um, that toe uh, and use... <laughs> <laughs> got another Sorry, video go here. I got, yeah. I got a great, and, uh, I got a great, I got a great one here. Go they, ahead, found a, they found a new tool just dealing with. <laughs> yeah, but you, it doesn't take a lot uh, with a foot save, you know, to generate momentum of sort of the parry or the rebound that you're giving. So, um, you know, if you have that ability, that reaction to just open up your foot, um, you know, and, and try and guide it to a wide area, you'll often be in a pretty good spot. So here's one from tight range, basically right here. It's NYCFC. Here's a slip ball coming in, holding this position. This one I never, I never saw, by the way. <laughs> See, I'm glad, I'm glad you're able just, to admit that. <laughs> yeah. No, I just saw the guy winding up, and so I kind of started to drop down, um, you know, sort of the try not to get beat through me. Um, but This one you did see, because look at that. That's, this is what you're talking about, that close range. So this, yeah, probably, this one. Six I, yards. And, yeah, and this one, obviously, I, I was trying to close the angle here. And I, I'm trying to get close to him as well because his back is to me. So I don't want him to turn here and see a bunch of, you know, white netting. So trying to get close to him. And then this is kind of like a hybrid uh, spread slash foot save where, you know, if this was reversed, then maybe I would drop down with my right leg. But um, it's kind of the point of I'm just trying to not let him score on the ground through me. I'm trying to drop that gap, uh, you know, between my butt and the ground. And I'm pretty confident that he's going to go this way. So that's the leg I'm going to drop. Um, that's sort of the, ter the one Ter Stegen is crazy on where he can, he can step to an angle like that and be sliding towards the guy, but he's like sitting on the ground and one leg is out to the left and then he can kind of bend his other toe um, where he can cover a lot of that, um, that real estate on the ground. So it, it's, uh, I mean, it's something that I still get wrong, you know, the, the foot save versus the spread versus the block, getting too tense when I should trust my reactions more, um, you know, or closing a guy down too aggressively. Um, so it, it's a, it is an art form and it happens really, really yeah. fast on the fly. So it's something that you just, you tinker with, you know, and you learn, um, you know, what you're really good at, um, you know, and what your strengths are and what you find, you know, is the most successful with the, the level that you're playing at. By the way, the, the fact that I know that Spencer's a high level goalkeeper is that it, the tape kept rolling into him saving a PK and he didn't even <laughs> blink, didn't even blink. Huh. It's like, all right. He scored, the, re he scored the rebound. So, <laughs> well, we didn't have to but include that part. It's no, one right. knew, no one knew that. Right. <laughs> um, no, um, I, you know, it's, it's funny because Omar brought up one thing, uh, a, a few months ago in regards to the flexibility and he was talking about, you know, um, which goalkeeper was it you were talking about that was just works on flexibility. Was it Tristegan, Omar? Well, you're on mute, so we can't hear you. Sorry. Uh, I actually went to the Arsenal versus Bayern Munich game here at Stuff Up Center or not Stuff Up anymore, but I don't know, Dignity Park Health. Dignity whatever. Health Sports Park. Dignity yeah. Health Park. There you go. And uh, no, I watched Neuer's <laughs> warm up, and the guy was doing like gymnastic stretches, man. Like it was, uh, yeah. it was really weird. He was getting like his toes over his forehead, and like even the warm up, <laughs> even like the warm up they were doing was like, by all accounts, not textbook at all. Like they literally had a ball on the top of the six. He started in the middle of the goal, and the, goal, the coach just tried to put it into the corner. He put his all his weight on his plant foot and then extended himself completely. Like there was like, if I was teaching that, like, don't arc, but it's Manuel Neuer. He can do whatever he wants. You know what I mean? So I'm watching that and I'm like, what in the world that this is what makes so much sense is that he has such a good routine that, like you said with Ter Stegen, he's so used to getting into those movements that when he gets there, when he gets into those movements at full speed, 
he has so much balance and stability. And like we know with goalkeeping, like to keep a variety of saves open from that close of a range, you have to have stability and balance. If, like Sasuke said earlier, if you're on your heels and you're sitting backward and you have no balance at all, you're only going to have one, one, uh, one, one option. There's a foot save. Yeah, because yeah, you're literally you're sitting, you're sitting into a chair. So I think, again, mixing the flexibility but also to the strength in the gym, the muscle memory to build the, uh, the, the quads, the hamstrings, the core, those three things com- like combined with the flexibility is everything. And I tell you this, you look at any top goalkeeper in the world, they all have incredible, uh, they're all in incredible shape. And I think that's the biggest thing is when you're in the gym, a lot of those, you know, twists off the wall, you catch a medicine ball, then you got to stabilize. You're on the BOSU ball, you catch a big weight, you got to stay and uh, you can't move. All those little things are huge when it comes to, uh, you know, 1v1s and uh, I guess slowing your body down prior to the shot. Uh, Spencer, is, is Jack really big on dynamic movements before you guys actually get into your activities? Yeah, we'll always do like some sort of activation. You know, we do like a lot of our in a typical, you know, like Saturday, if we're rolling through middle season, um, like midweek is when we do a lot of sort of our blocking, spreading. Um, and we'll always do some sort of like, you know, sort of mimicky where you'll roll a ball out to him from four yards and you can do a different variety. You can block out into a, a block shape. You could go into a spread with your left leg leading, go into a spread with your right leg um, leading. So, We'll always do some little bit of uh, um, activation, um, you know, before we go into those full spread um, sort of drills. I, I know Sask has been really, really in, with her club keepers, with her youth club keepers. Not, he's, she's been very, very adamant about, hey, you need, I need your movement. I need your body to be ready for activity for the second, mm-hmm. the second we get out there. You can't just put on the cleats and throw yourself into the cage and think that you're going to be able mm-hmm. to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you have to. I mean, even with even with UCLA, I mean, there's a half an hour with with you know our strength and conditioning coach doing all like like activity, like warm up activity, release. Like, so by the time I get the goalkeepers, they're they're ready to go. Like, they're ready to do whatever I need them to do, footwork, explosion, like everything. Um, but you got to get there. You know, you got these kids. But we talked about that. You got these kids that come out of class, they throw their cleats and their gloves on. <laughs> And you're and they're like, let's go. And you're like, okay, great. Yeah. Talk to me in 10 years and see how your body's feeling. (laughs) You know, you got you gotta get them there. And and it's muscle memory and it's getting into a routine so that you can do things properly. Yeah, I I, want to bring this up because uh, we were talking, you uh, I forget who it was, maybe maybe it was Spencer who was talking about overrunning the ball. And uh, when you're coming in too hard. So on Monday, we had Michael Lansing from uh, AC Horsens in, in the Danish Superliga on, and we were talking about, you know, um, you know, containing, you know, um, grabbing space, you know, covering space and not overrunning the ball. And I think you brought up a really, really good point on that. And that, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes when people try to go with a foot save is that they've overrun. They're so mm-hmm. close to the player. And if they do go feet, they're, they're, just, clipping, they're just clipping the guy. Mm-hmm. They're clipping the guy and, 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 and going down. So, you know, um, is that one of the biggest mistakes kind of Spencer that you, you've seen with keepers uh, when they try to try to go with the foot save is they just, they go too close to the player. Yeah. I think that that scenario, I think takes a lot of, um, I don't know, am I frozen here? Oh, we're back. No. Um, I think that scenario takes a lot of, one like watching other goalkeepers do it watching film um, of yourself doing it but that timing of if you're there a bit late and then you try and go down into that spread I think that a good striker can probably expose you for that they can you know maybe not finish it first time maybe they can dink you with it um yeah but I think more often than not the the sort of dropping into that spread or that foot save is when you can get really close to the guy um if you can't sort of get on top of him and, and sort of force him to hit that ball into you, then mm-hmm. I think potentially uh, more, more likely than not, the better scenario would be maybe to hold sort of halfway through that step and, and try and go into a more of a reaction, which you can still use a foot save in that scenario. But, um, you know, sort of that gray area of do I stop? and set and try and sit balanced and react to this or do I have an opportunity to get close to this guy and really make an impact uh, and make him uncomfortable with his finish and I think that's just something that you kind of have to tinker with as a goalkeeper and and tinker with 
um, again, what your strengths are. Are you really good in that spread or, um, you know, are you better off maybe, you know, giving yourself a chance to react to it? Yeah, because we talked about it. It's, we talked about it. It's timing. Like if you're da- if you're down it too early, you're he's gonna you're gonna be exposed. If you're too yeah. if you're too late, you're gonna be exposed. Like it's a timing with when he's taking the shot to go in the spread. It's it's a timing thing, and yep, um, sure. you've got to mess with it, and you've got to you've got to understand that. Yep. Hold on, Omar's got a clip. Omar's got a clip. He's got to share. So. Here we go. It's exactly what it's, it's on point with what Spencer's saying. It's like the last minute decision. You have to decide if you can gain ground. Great. If you can't, then stay up. So right here, you can see. Wait, what teams are these? San Antonio? Oh, those are caps too. Some old school. Oh, old school. <laughs> old school Spencer. Let's see, like right here, you gain as much ground as he could. He got set, and then he made the foot save. And I think a lot of goalkeepers, they end up coming out fully and don't allow themselves to get set. They get the in between, or they what go to a said, default. How, how do you get how do you get clips that are in such better like so, so much closer in? I can't. All my clips are so far away. Look at this. We can really yeah. see him here. But again, I think that's where I think the biggest timing. thing too is is what we yeah, it's timing, but it's like the from a coach's perspective and a goalkeeper's perspective of trial and error. There have been mm-hmm. so many times on one v ones that I've come out where I come out full speed, almost 50 50 ball. They take a touch around me, and they put it in. And in my head, I'm like, why didn't I just come out and get set? I made it so easy. Yeah. And then you make that mistake, you go out again. And I'm sure, Spencer, that's probably happened to you on many occasions. I mean, I'm probably in Bradenton back when you were younger, too. You guys trained every single day. Like, the trial and error of getting those mistakes happening to you. And also, too, being able to have that coach say, hey, tomorrow's a new day. Let's try and actually get better from this uh, position that we're in right now. Yeah, sure. and I think, and I, I think, I'm sorry. I think with kids, and we talked about this the other day, like, with kids, it's – Again, we're going to keep coming back to it's understanding when and why. And like you have a lot of young kids, they come out and they, they do it because they see it and they're like, oh, I'm going to do a spread and I'm going to do this. And it's just the wrong thing to use at the wrong time and at the wrong distance and everything. And they're just doing it because they're doing it. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and to even take it a step further, um, you know, a lot of that decision could come down to who it is that's about to receive the ball. You know, I think, um, you know, we probably spend, I mean, Jack spends hours, Jack Stern spends hours each week putting clips together of the attacking uh, players from the opposing team. Um, but, you know, if, if I'm going into a game where I know it's a striker that's a, you know, sort of a cheeky player, then maybe that's a scenario where another striker who's maybe more of a power, um, you know, likes to strike through the ball. If it's a more crafty striker, then maybe that's a scenario where I'm, I'm going to sit deeper and I'm going to try and react and, and make a save, um, you know, with my reactions. Or if it's someone that I know just likes to hit the ball as hard as they can when they get in a round, maybe that's a scenario where you can, you can take a gamble to get a bit closer to them because, uh, you know, you're not expecting them to pick their head up and sort of slot it on you. Um, so there's, it's a lot of variables, man. And, and it, you know, each, each year you sort of get a little bit more, um, sharp with that decision and, um, you know, and, and the more sort of, um, prepared you are going into a game and, and the guys that you're going to face, I know it's a little bit more difficult at the, uh, at the youth level, but, um, you know, as, as I've gotten into the MLS and I watch more and more of opposing teams, it's, it's extremely, um, beneficial. Yeah, you know, it's, it's really good that you said that. I mean, and I understand what you're saying in regards to the youth level, that it's more difficult. But nowadays, it, you know, us, us, us older, older keepers now, you know, like the youth keepers now, like they've got access to stuff that we've never had access to. I mean, with yeah, huddle yeah. and all that, like there's no excuse for you not being, from the, you know, ready. I almost said DA, but I guess it's not DA, ECNL, uh, ECNL game this week. Um, you should be able to find those players that you're playing against and you should be able to find that stuff. It's not like it, it doesn't exist anymore, you know? And mm-hmm. I'm, yes, yes. And you know, maybe when you're nine and 10 and 11, it, it might be a little bit more difficult, but you know, we're, we're talking about a little bit, you know, more 14, 15, 16 years old where, where, where that's yeah. so important and, and having those scouting reports. Um, I love Spencer, what you brought up about in regards to the improvisation. And, you know, you said earlier that Atlanta United save, you're like, well, that was a little unorthodox. It doesn't matter doesn't matter if it's no, unorthodox sure. because in the moment that's what you felt your body needed to do and based on i think what happened there is that you were already going down and because you mm. were already going down because you were already leaning you decided to to drop and kind of make a roadblock or a barrier 
by going down like that and creating as much space as possible for that ball to, to get hit into that you can clear away. Almost kind of like you made yourself a deflector board, basically. Yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. If you see a keeper, no. young keeper do that, let him, let him keep doing that and let, let him keep trying yeah. that stuff, you know? Um, keep the ball out of the net. Yep. <laughs> Yep. I'm never going to get right. mad at you for keeping the ball out of the net. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Nope. Figure, you know, we'll figure the rest out. Just keep the ball out of the net. <laughs> Um, well, uh, we're, we're getting to about an hour right now. So, uh, Spence, first off, thanks for taking all the time, man. Um, I know sure. uh, you've got a busy, busy schedule, uh, in regards to, you know, first off, I mean, we're really excited. MLS is back tournament, you know, starting July yeah, I 6th. I mean, I mean, and you guys got your groups already. So, uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of games in a short amount of time. So, I know it, it'll be, it'll be cool just as a, uh, as a, you know, a fan as well to be able to have games rolling, uh, sort of around the clock when we're in the hotel room. So give us something to do down there for four or five weeks. <laughs> Are you guys allowed to play fantasy on your, uh, with, with MLS? You guys, can you guys do that? <laughs> if I was, I wouldn't admit it on here. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I'm totally, I'm totally, I'm totally kidding on that one. Um, I know. I'm just kidding. Well, uh, bef before we get going, um, Spence, if there's any any young goalkeepers out there uh, that ever want to reach out to you, um, you know, and and you know, one of the really cool things I, I see, and we we talk about this on the show all the time, is that you guys in MLS and in the other leagues, um, you know, who are playing at the highest levels, um, are really open to to helping the younger generation. You know, sure. obviously. You know, it was something that was extremely important for you coming up. You came through some such great programs such as Crossfire. Then obviously University mm -hmm. of Washington had a really good history. And then, um, and then I think another thing that really helped you out, and I think a lot of young goalkeepers need to see this, is that going on loan and you grabbed your opportunities. You know, a lot of, a lot sure. of goalkeepers think that that's a, a bad thing to go on loan. But no, that's kind of how you, you kind of build a reputation and showcase that I am an MLS goalkeeper. Yeah, I think, you know, it, at that moment in my career, um, you know, the Carl Robinson and I had a good relationship and I'm sort of a no BS, you know, transparency guy when it comes to coaches. And he said, um, you know, Vernovich is going to be my guy next year. So you can be the two uh, on the bench um, next season or if you want to figure out another scenario. Um, and I had this Cincinnati, um, I had some relationship with Alan Koch, who had drafted me to Vancouver, who was then a head coach and um, sort of uh, had, you know, there was potential there of them getting an MLS bid even for the following season. And um, I think one thing that's really good about players going on loan, and I say this, you know, to, I said this to Ben Lunt, um, who's on under salary with Cincinnati, who's on loan to Louisville's, um, you know, maybe if you stay here and you're the number three, maybe Cincinnati can say, oh, this guy like is a really good goalkeeper, you know, but the rest of the league doesn't know that. If you go on loan and you go to a, a really well-respected club, you know, Louisville, Cincinnati at the time, you know, Tampa Bay, Phoenix, um, Sacramento, and you go play really well, that's much more attractive both for your resume as well for the rest of the MLS that are looking for, you know, domestic goalkeepers. Um, so that was sort of, sort of ended up being a no brainer for me that I, you know, I was ready to go for a new challenge and I wanted to put, um, you know, some, some of my games and ability on film for the league to see. And, um, it ended up, you know, working out for me with them getting a, a move done and, um, you know, sort of the rest has been history, but, um, sometimes you got to take risks like that in your career, you know, in theory, it could have been a, a greater, uh, risk for me to just stay in Vancouver and rot, um. So, um, to me, it was, it was no, an because, easy decision. Because coach, coaches are looking for you to play. You know, yeah. if you're going to sit and you're going to sit in that third spot or even that second spot sometime and you're not getting any game time and you're not seeing any play and you're just a practice goalkeeper, they're going to pass you over for the person that does go and, and takes that chance and is getting game time and is seeing all of that. There's, there's sure. something to be said for that. And we talked about that with even the – um, some of the girls players that have gone overseas go if you're going to sit number two or number three here in NWSL go and start in, Par in yeah. France go and start in England and, and sure. you'll be seen and you you yeah. know it'll it'll add to your resume yep yeah. thousand and, percent and, and Omar I know you know one thing that was great was last year is in regards to you were able to showcase a lot of goalkeepers in that USL championship um, you know and and you even said you're like the reason I'm doing this is I want 
people to get exposed to these goalkeepers. So they're familiar with these goalkeepers. Because I think just honestly, just the more exposure that the, the lower divisions get, the only, the only, it's only going to benefit goalkeepers who want to make that move, you know, to, to that next level. Um, because there's going to yeah. be a little bit more of a fanfare for that, you know, and people are yeah. going to be like, I know who Spencer Ritchie is. I want that guy on my team, you know, so. But also too, I think, you know, the biggest thing that I wanted to do, I think Mike, you mentioned it as well, is that uh, a lot of the kids don't understand that the highest level they're probably going to get to, if they get to the professional level, I mean, the 1% of 1% make it to the Premier League, right? But like the USL is, imp- is very, very difficult to get into. And as Spencer said, like, you know, even being as good as he is and then being told he's going to be the number two and having to go look elsewhere, there are so many guys around the country who are being that, told that same exact thing and they're having to change their own narrative and their own lifestyle to accommodate their professional uh, aspirations. So I think a lot of these kids need to understand that you can say that you're good and you can say that you're this, this, and that, but until you actually watch the guys that you're probably going to end up competing against and see how great they are and how meticulous they are about their, their technique and everything about them is so sharp and they're still at the USL level making their way up to the MLS and hopefully to the Premier League and beyond after that but you see how good they are, then I think a lot of these kids are going to be exposed. You know what I mean? I think a lot of them are going to be like, wow, okay, I said I work hard, but when I see these guys, how good they are, then I, I realize I have to call myself on my own stuff, you know? So I think that's the biggest thing for me is letting these kids understand that, like, you may think you're good, but watch how good these guys are, who are the second and third choice goalkeepers in USL, and how good they are, and then you tell me how good you are. And then that's why I want to give a shout out to Jack in regards to him posting videos of your guys training Spencer, because I think kids need to see that. So kids good. need yeah. to, need yeah, to yeah, see the sessions because the thing is, is that like, it's one thing for them to see highlight clips, which are great and everything like that. And you know, but it's, it's another thing for them to see the pros actually in the training environment mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. saying, Oh, this is the level. This is the level. This is not, yeah. You know, this is not what I, I can't tell you how many young kids I've had who've been national pool keepers and they think that they, it's done. It's a, it's, oh, they it's think a, they're going right, right to, yeah. you know, that's right to this. Look, it's this way in most sports and major league baseball guys. Hey, that's why there's so many divisions. <laughs> you know, you don't, yeah. you don't roll into the Yankees unless you're Derek Jeter. Like it, it's rare and it doesn't happen and you have to put your time in and you have to, you know, take your hits and, you know, you know, play in certain divisions and certain leagues and work your way up and get your experience. And especially as a goalkeeper, because you get better with more experience and age. And we yeah. all know that. You know? Yeah. And you gotta, and you gotta earn it multiple times. I mean, not just at each level, but you know, I'm now going on my third head coach in, in six months and, you know, I'm back. I, I, you know, until until you become the the the, the Stephen Fry's, the Robles, the mm-hmm. Sean Johnson, where it's like, all right, they're number ones. You know, they could have five shockers in a row. You're writing them in the team. Um, but you know, until it, and not even that the one of the one percent, but until you've then done it for numerous years in a row, um, you know, I, you know, I'm back in a similar scenario where I, I think I have you know an advantage and be haven't been the guy for the first two games but you just never know with the new coaching staff so um you even when you earn it once in the mls it just it's uh it's not over so the grind never stops man and uh, i feel like goalkeeping more than anything um i've certainly had to uh you know i went into uw playing i had some some bad injuries and, and health issues um sort of had to grind my way through the usl um, you know, playing in front of a hundred people, not knowing when I was going to play, even if I played well, it's just, um, sort of the life of a goalkeeper until you really, really make it. So mm-hmm. um, now you're playing it it against a, Atlanta with 75,000 people. You know? Yeah. 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 It's no, seriously, that's how it happens. So, um, no, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it is a great position to play. It's extremely rewarding. Um, but there, you know, it's no shortage of hard work and it's no shortage of being, um, you know, mentally, uh, capable for the ride as well. So, um, so yeah. Well, so, so if anybody else wants to reach out to you, uh, what's the best social media for them to do? Oh, wow. Hey, look at this timing. Oh no, hold up. on. Hold on. Oh, we can't leave. Until Is it this. a doggy? Uh, you, you can leave him. Oh, we, she brought him up here to... oh! Oh, oh, he's a puppy. Oh, hey, oh buddy. Oh, oh, gosh. Oh, now, you want you, me, now you're making the, me want to call my dogs. And yeah. The oh, views man. are, the views are just going to go. Where, where oh, are no, Coco he's trying to eat my AirPods. Yeah, this is Chungus. Coco is over here under the table. Chanel's over there, and Jagger's on the couch. <laughs> what do you, can you oh say my hello? Gosh. I, I say hello. My wife took him up here to use that. Uh, say hello, Chungus. Oh, <laughs> hello, Chungus. 
uh, we have a little uh, like pee pad for him up here, so Aww. I'm still potty training, you know. But um, yeah, he'll so, outgrow the pee pad. <laughs> yeah, we hope. We hope so. No, um, social media is all uh, Spencer Ritchie 18, but only one R. So there's a little uh, crossover there in the middle, and um, I think that's my my username for all of them. So. I'm very active on social media. I love to talk goalkeeping on there, um, engage with different people. And I also talk about a lot of other random shit that's not related to soccer at all. So, um, so yeah, give me awesome. a follow. We can hang out on there. Awesome. Awesome, man. I mean, well, we'll we're going to have to have you back, man. I mean, uh, this has just sure. been an enjoyable, honestly, an enjoyable piece, you know. Uh, For sure. Just, you know, when – it's so funny to me when goalkeepers say, you know, I, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a goalkeeper coach. I don't know how I'm going to be able to handle this or whatever. And it's like, man, I mean, the level of knowledge that, you know, the goalkeepers you guys have nowadays in, in MLS is just, you know, it's, it's just it's just next level. It's just next level. Um, For sure. You got it, man. You got to keep up with – if the MLS is going to keep spending money, they're not they're not buying DP goalkeepers, you know. So we got to uh, – we got to be – stay sharp and, and keep trying to educate – you know, ourselves to, uh, to keep up with the Carlos Vales of the world. So, um, that's what we're doing. Or the Omars. <laughs> or the or Omars. Omars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you guys, of course you can reach out to Omar Zini at pro GK Academy underscore Saskia Weber at Saskia underscore Weber contact at inside. That's the number 18 media.com or at goalkeeper podcast. If you have a guest suggestion or a topic suggestion, uh, that's all the time on Inside the 18. Enjoy the humidity in Orlando, Spencer, and we are out. <laughs>